Hello, welcome back. This is going to be the last topic for this series. In one of the earlier videos, we saw how if you know what's coming, then most tactics slash tricky spins can be figured out. But a limiting factor is how fast the human body can move, which is why playing fast is favorable and topspin is an attacking stroke that gives you a higher margin of error compared to other strokes. But this margin of error is still small. You still have to adjust to various properties of the incoming ball. And here's the catch. You can figure out if you know what's coming. So the game now becomes to keep your opponent guessing as to what's going to come. So the key now is variation in the bounce, height, speed of the ball, and spin, which can be a little harder to gauge compared to the other factors. In general, most people can understand how it could be effective to put a lot of spin on the ball. But beyond a level, the maximum spin you can put on the ball is only as effective as the minimum spin you can put on the ball using a similar action. If the difference between the max spin and the minimum spin is not that high, then it's easier for your opponent to adjust to the ball. For example, a very fast push with no spin can also be quite lethal. Beyond that, for good control, you must also be able to access some spin levels in between so that you can adjust according to various incoming balls. There's an interesting point in this table tennis daily video that I watched recently. Going from a beginner to an amateur or semi-pro, there is a noticeable difference in the speed and the amount of spin that is generated. So you'd think that going from there to pro would result in a similar increase in spin slash speed. But that is not the case. This Your ball was really I great. It well, yeah. yeah, it was really amazing. Okay, so my spin now was quite good. It was incredible good, okay. yeah. Then what is Mar Long's like? He waits so long. It, would you say it's double this spin? You know, it's, it's definitely more spin, but uh, your one is like, you're there, and I can see early where you're going. Uh -huh, okay. He one would be there, and he would wait and would look where I am. <laughs> and then the last <laughs> moment, he could actually still play f fast yeah. or very slow. Yeah. So he always changed his spin, his rhythm, his placement, and that's what makes it so difficult. Very interesting. Not the, the stroke itself was good, yeah. but his variety is, of course. And of course, ah, interesting. Yeah. Of course, none of this variation will happen automatically. You would have to dedicate time specifically in order to practice some of this. And while you get lost in practicing this variation, don't forget that what makes it lethal is that if your opponent misreads the variation, then you're there waiting with your attack. If there's no penalty for them misreading the variation, then the point is lost. Okay, and that ends the spin part of the video, which brings us to anticipation. The ability to anticipate is what truly makes great players, more than how perfect their stroke mechanics are. You would have seen players around you who play well, but when they're playing a match, you can't really say whether they'd win or lose. It kind of feels like they have no gameplay in mind, and that's because there is no anticipation. There is a tempting feeling, I get it. If I do random multiball or random balls from a robot, then I can increase my reflex level to a point where I'm ready for any incoming ball. But that's not going to happen. There is a limit to how fast your reaction speed can get. And in a match, if you're in a position where your opponent can randomly put the ball wherever they want, then you might as well have lost the point. Anticipation can be a little scary. If you never predict, then you're never wrong. But it is necessary. In a face-off where you're more or less evenly matched, you'd rather be able to predict one thing and use 100% of your force in it rather than be ready for anything but only be able to use 50% of your force. Look at some of these points. In all fairness. It might look silly when they miss it. It seems like the pros should have been able to reach the ball, but this is a risk that they take when they're anticipating. Okay, you might say. How do I build this anticipation? Well, you start off by predicting based on certain cues, which is why it is helpful practicing with another human, because you're picking up cues like, if they bend like this, how much spin would I get? If their head turns, which way are they more likely to hit? And so on. Initially, you might be wrong more often, but slowly you'll figure stuff out 
observe more minute cues and so on. It can be a long process, which is why it takes a few years from learning the basic strokes to reaching a position where you can use those strokes effectively in gameplay. One tip is even in practice, let's say you're practicing one ball to your forehand and one ball to the backhand, even though you know that the ball is going to come to your forehand and then to your backhand, pay close attention to your partner's hand and body. That's the best way to pick up on cues. And as you go along this path, you'll notice some patterns and you'll realize that the range of actions that you would have to anticipate can be limited by what you do before the point. Actions that can be taken by your opponent can be forced by you. For example, if you push to the wide forehand, you can be pretty sure that the ball is going to come back towards one half of the table. Another example, you're playing a match and your opponent has figured out that there's this particular serve of his that you can't really receive well. And now you're in a clutch situation where it's your opponent's serve and he needs the point. You can be pretty reasonably sure that he's going to be using that one serve. And this is how it goes. You build your anticipation by noticing some patterns. And then you practice on those patterns. And then next time your anticipation can go a little bit further and the cycle continues. And that's it for the series. I hope you found it helpful. We discussed various general stuff for things like how to receive serves or handle a particular spin. I'm hoping that at this point, you can figure it out by yourself through trial and error. That was my main aim, to introduce a model so that when you're stuck, you can try and figure something out yourself. <laughs> what spin is on that? Free free. Thanks for watching.